And fair enough, but you can make a credible case for it. But then I thought, well, when that gets out of hand, maybe you're nihilistic because life, because you're mortal and life ends in death. So you're sort of nihilistic because of suffering. And so then you become nihilistic as a logical response to that. And then what happens? And then what you see is that nihilistic people definitely make suffering worse. Definitely. They make it worse for themselves, for sure. But then they get bitter because their lives are so unbearable, and then they start to take it out on other people. So if you are nihilistic, that's not neutral. It gets bad real fast. So then I thought, well, what are, are there any antidotes to meaninglessness? And rational antidotes are hard to come by because you can just say, well, who cares if in a thousand years we're all going to be dead? What, why get out of bed in the morning? You can't really make, mount a rational case why that's not reasonable. Now, I'm not saying it is reasonable, but I thought about music. Music is a very strange art form. I had a great journalist friend of mine. He said to me the other day, he said, all art aspires to the condition of music. I thought was great. But music, it's, you think about the revitalizing effect mu music continues to have in our culture, especially among young people, and that's really, really been the case since the beginning of the 60s. It's like we got more nihilistic and less religious and all of that as our culture became more secular and more rational, more materialistic. And at the same time, the power of music as a cultural phenomenon just grew and grew and grew and grew. Say, so music gives you the intimation of meaning. Right, directly. So I used to watch punk rockers. I went to a Ramones concert once, which was really fun. We were up in the second floor of this theater in Montreal, and uh, the Ramones were playing on stage like a hundred feet away with their with their like their uh, their their huge stu not their studio uh, stadium equipment. It was so loud in there, like I had to listen to the whole concert with my ears plugged, and I was still like three quarters deaf for three days. And beneath us, on the uh, the stage, sort of, in front of the stage, there was a flat place, and all these punks were down there smashing into each other and, 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 and doing this, this really rough dance. And I thought, this is so cool. We got all these nihilistic punks in here, like half beating themselves up, dancing, and, in, and, and being taken in by this rough music that gave them, even in their aggressive nihilism, a sense of meaning. I thought that was so cool. So why does music do that? That's a good question, because people think of music as a non-representational art. It doesn't represent anything. It's not like a drawing or a picture, or even dance, where you can act something out. It's really? Non-representational. I don't agree with that. Like, What do you mean by music being non-representational? Well, it's not a picture of anything. Right, but it 